trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And bring us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for this gathering in this cabinet room. We thank you for our ambassador who is with us. We thank you for the friendship of our two countries. We pray blessings upon our prime minister and our cabinet ministers and our technical persons who are here with us and upon our country. We ask you to send the Holy Spirit with us here today. We ask for the spirit of um, gratitude as we receive the gift that we have provided to one nation and in the wisdom they are sharing it with us today. We thank you for this and we ask you to give us the guidance and the wisdom to use these resources in the way that you think see fit so that our people can benefit from it. We pray as well for the spirit of service that we may always be your hands and feet in this world. We ask you this and all other blessings that you know that we need. We thank you for hearing this prayer and we make it in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Honorable Philip J. Pierre, Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Cabinet of Ministers, His Excellency Peter Chiyan Chen, Mr. Augusta Degazo, Cabinet Secretary, Mr. Esther Rigobert, Permanent Secretary in the Office of the Miss, what did I say? Uh, Miss Esther Rigobert, Permanent Secretary in the Office of the Prime Minister. Mr. Paul Hilaire, Permanent Secretary in the Department of Economic Development and the Youth Economy. Dr. Cadelia Ambrose, Permanent Secretary in the Department of Local Government and Housing. Sorry. Accountant General, Mr. Matthew Branford, Mr. Edison, Sue, staff of the Embassy of the Republic of China, Taiwan, staff of the Office of the Prime Minister, welcome and good morning. Good morning. Oh, sorry. <laughs> good morning. Um, I would like to welcome you all to the presentation of what I know is a very exciting day for the Cabinet of Ministers, the check handing over of our constituency development program. Round of applause. <laughs> but that is not the only thing that we are going to receive from our friends from Taiwan. Today, we are also here to receive check presentations for human resource development centers, national disability policy, and a grant towards the independence 45 anniversary celebrations. So round of applause again for all that we are um, receiving today from our friends of the Republic of China, Taiwan. I would now like to welcome Ambassador, no stranger to this cabinet room and to this occasion, Ambassador Peter Chen. Honorable <clears throat> Prime Minister Philip Pierre, esteemed Cabinet Ministers, Deputy Speaker, Parliamentary Secretary, Attorney General, Cabinet Secretary, and PS, Accountant, Accountant General, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. I'm truly honored and pleased to be here for the second time in January 2024. <laughs> 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 to come more often. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, on behalf of the, of the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, to make the significant contribution to four projects that will benefit the lives of people and communities in St. Lucia including the Community Development Program, CDP, developing national disability policy, rehabilitation of human resource center, as well as the sponsorship for fireworks display and solution national flags on the 45th anniversary of independence. As a steadfast partner of Sanusha, 
Taiwan recognizes the pivotal role that the CDP plays in addressing the social economic challenges faced by communities. And we are proud to be an integral part of this ongoing vital program in collaboration between the San Lucia government. Likewise, as Taiwan and San Lucia share the values of human rights and equality, we are also very happy to support AMRO Prime Minister Fiji Jepier and the San Lucia government's social justice and community development strategy, where the projects of national disability policy and the rehabilitation of human resource centers are highlighted on the agenda. Last year, I had the privilege of accompanying several parliamentary representatives along with officials from the Ministry of Economic Development on a visit to numerous CDP sites and witnessed firsthand the positive impacts to the people's daily lives. And I eagerly anticipate I eagerly anticipate the ongoing results of the CDP and social initiatives to the individuals, communities, and constituencies again. And meanwhile, as St. Lucia is about to celebrate its 45th anniversary of independence in strengthening nation's unity and identity, Taiwan is more than happy to support the firework display on the evening of 21st February 2024 and to sponsor 250 hand-waving flags and 80 large flags produced in Taiwan and will be soon shipped to San Lucia to be part of the celebration. And I'm so glad to... <laughs> I'm so glad to be uh, able to attend the 45th anniversary, the celebration of the 45th anniversary of independence. And I hope after another 45 years, I can come back <laughs> to attend the celebration again. We will still be here. <laughs> 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 Taiwan will continue to collaborate with Honorable Prime Minister Fiji Jepier and the government of San Lucia, steering our nations to a brighter and more prosperous tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador, for your remarks and also for your assistance to the various activities that we will undertake this year as a government. If you would notice that most of, if not all, of the programs that this government undertakes is for the people of St. Lucia to better the lives of the people of St. Lucia and the national disability policy would be one to inform as an inclusive government um, our ways to ensure that all sectors, all people in St. Lucia can take part, can contribute to the development of this country. I did not mention the quantum of the funds, but I don't know if that's um, for the Prime Minister to disclose to his ministers, but um, I would just, <laughs> I, know you're, I know you guys always, you know, <laughs> but for, for our audience sake, <laughs> for our audience sake um the constituency development program will be in the tune of 2.9 million dollars the human resource development centers eight hundred and twenty five thousand five hundred dollars the national disability policy thirty thousand and the contribution to the independence fireworks would be fifty three thousand dollars all made possible by the government and the people of the republic of china taiwan i would now like to call on honorable prime minister philip jpier to deliver remarks prime minister thank you very much Mondi. um before we start i want to, to express to honorable emma hippolyt our deepest condolences. She lost two siblings, two brothers. I know one very well. So I think we should all express our condolences to Honorable Hippolyte and a family by this a meter silence. Could you please stand?
Thank you. Good morning, good morning, colleagues. Good morning, Ambassador. Good morning, Permanent Secretary, staff of the, of the Taiwanese Embassy, ladies and gentlemen. This morning is, is kind of pleasing in that if all that talk about taxation, 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 we are receiving a grant. Let me make it pollution clear to the people of St. Lucia that this government has seen absolutely, we've not seen any draft tax bill. This cabinet room has not seen any draft tax bill. There is no draft tax bill that's been discussed by the cabinet. This government has made it very easy or easier in terms of tax. We've given an amnesty on all arrears of income tax. Never in the history of this country, never from this country's history has there ever been an amnesty on tax interest and tax penalties. And bear with me what that means. That means that if you collected VAT on behalf of the people of St. Lucia, and remember VAT is collected on behalf of the government of St. Lucia, and you do not pay that VAT back to the government after you've collected it, there is normally a fine or some or interest. This government has waived it completely. So we say to you, you just pay the VAT and that's it. Never before has that ever happened. This government has given in terms of tax thresholds the highest tax threshold again ever, $24,000 in terms of a tax threshold. So people who get $2,000, $25,000. So people who get $2,000 or less do not pay any taxation. Never before. That is our history on taxation. That's our history on taxation. So I want to make it abundantly clear to all and sundry that there is absolutely no tax bill in this cabinet for consideration by this government. What we're doing is we are following what was left for us as evidenced by an instruction in that the 12 income tax laws or tax laws that existed in the country an instruction was given which we did not which we did not change the instruction was that these laws be consolidated into one law and then there will be public discussion on these laws so i want to make it abundantly clear that what's happening now is a discussion on the existing tax laws in this country with some amendments that were recommended. But these amendments or that bill has not come in this cabinet room for any discussion. What's happening now is discussion by the public, by NGOs, by those involved. So I want to make it up on this. Anyhow, let's get to the good news. Or let's get to the true news. The true news today is that we are receiving we are receiving a grant from the government of Taiwan. And that grant is multifaceted. And, and that is also very important. We're getting money for the renovations of HRDCs. HRDCs are very important to communities. And I hope this year we can use these HRDCs in a way that is sustainable and in a way that benefits the people of the constituency a lot more. They can't be only used for dances and parties. We have, they have, we have to use them for education. And this year I've instructed my, my staff, we need to have, we need to raise the level of discussion in this country. We need to use the HRDCs for lectures and for debates because the level of discussion in this country has reached a, 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 the lowest level Ever. There is no discussion, there's no serious discussion on ideas. What we have is innuendo and sometimes untruths and misinformation. So I hope that these HRDCs 
can be used for that level to raise the level, raise it a bit. And I am sure that most of my, of my colleagues want their HRDCs renovated and want them repaired. But as usual, I want to inform them that they, they must remember there's a, there's a HRDC in Castries East. <laughs> and Castries East seems to have been, is forgotten. So, Castries East is forgotten by the Minister of Finance? That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> He's the Minister of Finance. <laughs> So these, and I'm sure we will see about these that something happens to improve the the, the, the physical structure of these of these HRDs. And as I'm here, I want to tell the the ambassador that these HRDCs also need equipment. They need computers. They need chairs. They need furniture. You know, so we can convert them into real learning centers. They're just an idea. <laughs> there also is a grant for a policy on differently abled people. Now, um, you know, thinking about differently abled people, uh, the society has grown, has matured as far as that is concerned. But you know, I can share our own personal experience in something that I'm not afraid to say. I was actually born differently able. My feet were, were crooked when I was born. And then I was fortunate in that my parents could send me abroad. So I see my parents could send me abroad and I could, could have a normal childhood and play sports, etc., etc. But there are many people who were not, who were not that fortunate. Anytime I see anyone walking the streets with curved feet, I say to myself that I wish that I could get, I could be in a position to assist them, to assist them so that at least when they are at a younger age, because the younger the better, to get their, their feet straight as I got mine. So this is, this is really, when I speak about disabilities also, or differently able, this gets, gets close to my heart, and also my colleague, who is a hero for the different able? Um, the member for Miko North. He's shown that to ex dexterity and discipline, he can break all barriers. So, this also is important to me, different able. And also, again, personally, some people thought that I was differently able with my speech. And that was used, I was ridiculed, as far as that's concerned, at the highest levels. At the highest level of this country, I was ridiculed. At the highest level of this country, but I did not take it. I did not carry it on, on, on my shoulder. And right now, the people of St. Lucia, in spite of that, and the help of my colleagues, have made me the Prime Minister of St. Lucia, of which I'm very proud. <laughs> The grants this, this, this morning, in terms of our CDP, and as the ambassador says, the CDP program touches all the constituencies. And again, I want to reiterate that this government has ensured that all 17 constituencies get a, get a grant from the CDP. All 17 constituencies, including those represented by the opposition. And I, want to, and I want to see that when we were in opposition, we were never offered that privilege to share from what the government of Taiwan did. But we, as our independence seems says in the capital city, we are inclusive. We do not believe that, that a constituency should suffer because they did not vote for a particular party. So we ensure, we will, we will ensure that in this disbursement of funds, the constituencies that did not vote for us. Our philosophy is that they are solutions and they have to benefit from the grant of the Taiwanese government. <laughs> it is our independence celebrations and this morning we launched our in independence for the fifth independence anniversary and the celebrations will continue, the celebrations are continuing and the, the, the grant for the fireworks that they, and the flags is timely. 
but I, I like to see to the ambassador that next year when he's given us the, the, the grant, it would be it would be very good if we could find a way to produce them in St. Lucia so that the people of St. Lucia could bend from that. So I think we have to start very early in doing that, but I want to thank the government of Taiwan. And I want to reiterate St. Lucia's independent foreign policy. We reserve the right to be friends with whoever we want. We do not interfere in the, in the internal affairs of any country. We do not interfere. We do not interfere. We believe in the peaceful coexistence of all countries and the peaceful coexistence of all nations. We do not want people to impose their values on us, nor be imposing our values on anyone. Tomorrow, we are going to be receiving a, a, a bridge in Pia, in Shozel, based on the, the support from the uh, European government. We thank them for that. But at the same time, we believe that we are a sovereign country, we are a small country, but we reserve the right to have to be friends with who we want and to respect each other's sovereignty. So, Ambassador, I thank you very much on behalf of the cabinet, on behalf of the people of St. Lucia. I'm sure the CDP grants will be used beneficially. Um, you know, in, my biz in, the, in the business that, in, that we are in, CDP grants create a lot of excitement because ministers have the privilege of being able to use these CDP grants in their constituencies to touch people. And that's why we are in government, to touch people. And sometimes the, many people don't understand what it means for politician to touch people's lives. You know, we are in the, we know we are in the business of prudence and fiscal prudence and procurement rules, all these things we follow, we know it must happen. But sometimes politicians are not, they do not want to break the law. But politicians are faced every day with urgency. Give you an example. There was a fire in my constituency yesterday afternoon. Five people lost absolutely everything, everything they have. Now, today, they've come to the parliamentary rep. Of course, they come to the parliamentary rep. What must be understood is it may not be necessary, it may not be possible to get ID cards, bills, police record, um, fire record, to help these people. And that is the reality that we face every day in our lives as politicians. The understanding that people need urgent support. So what do I have to do in the meantime? I have to find money from my almost absent resources to support. I have to, because I can't leave five people on the streets. I can't do it. And this is what we try sometimes we try to tell our technocrats all the time. Not only our local technocrats, our foreign technocrats, our foreign that come that try to impose these rules on us without understanding the reality of our situation. They don't understand it. And they impose all these rules, all these regulations, all these statutes, they impose on us as small islands, looking for little money. We never asked for a billion dollars. We asked for little money. And all these rules and regulations are put on us. And whilst we are doing that, our people are suffering. And whilst we are doing that, the political reality is we are the ones who get blamed. So I want to thank you for understanding that these grants are necessary and they serve a useful purpose. And I know that we've negotiated for five years, but in our business, sometimes it's, it's, a, it's a little less than five years. So I will ask you, in, 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 in the public, in the public domain, if all the civil servants are on, to see if our CDB can be made a little wider. <laughs> <laughs> you see, 
because in spite of this, this gentleman ladies not clapping, they come after me all the time. So, in, yes, come after me, and they also and they ask for the allocations to be increased all the time. And if I've listened to them, I get none for myself. So I, I think that you know you must understand how these things touch people's lives. It is just in a fundamental way they touch people's lives. So, Ambassador, thank you very much, and be after the government. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honourable Prime Minister. And uh, I think Prime Minister forgot to, make, to mention just one very important, which he has in the past, that the funds go to co the Consolidated Fund, which is why we have our Accountant General here to receive the checks on behalf of the government of St. Lucia. So please join me, Accountant General, Mr. Matthew, Ra Matthew Branford, um, Ambassador and Prime Minister, to... Prime Minister, you know, Prime Minister just touched the check briefly and immediately hand it over to the Accountant General. I must you forget to say that we are paying no commission on the donation. <laughs> <laughs> I will leave that for you all to see. <laughs> okay, so Prime Minister will receive the check. Protocol have it been set. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, on behalf of the government and people of St. Lucia, Ambassador, I wish to convey our appreciation for the generosity demonstrated by the government and people of the Republic of China, Taiwan. Um, we are deeply grateful for the recent check presentation amounting to about $3.7 million, the breakdown which I would not give as it has already been given. Um, that amount will be going towards, as was indicated earlier, four initiatives, um, adaptive program for persons with disability, rehabilitation of human resource centers, um, the 45 independence anniversary um, program, and the CDP in accordance with the MOU grants for 20, year 2023. The collaboration and support extended by your esteemed government play a pivotal role in fostering economic development within our nation. The involvement of your Czech presentation further underscores the strength of the bilateral relationship between our two countries. Your Excellency, please accept our renewed assurances of our highest consideration. We eagerly anticipate the continued cultivation of this positive and mutually benefit par beneficial sorry, partnership for the prosperity of our two nations. On that basis, Mr. Um, Excellency Ambassador, I would like to present on behalf of the government and people of St. Lucia three thank you letters for the um, presentation earlier. Thank you very much.